How's everybody doing today? Yeah! All right, well, welcome to the first ever, uh, this isn't really the first ever, it's our first ever formal strange demo day. Um, my name is Jeffrey Howard. I'm one of the founders of Project Spaces. Um, and you are in Project Owl. Uh, our first space was Project Rhino. And for those of you that don't know, Project Rhino and Project Owl are the founder-friendly co-working spaces in downtown Toronto, and it was a complete accident how it all began. Um, many of you have actually gotten to go on a tour with me because um, you were crazy and thought you could start a business, um, and I thought that was a great idea and I supported and encouraged you, but for the, many of you, this is your first time ever in a Project Spaces space. Um, so I will share with you a little bit of the history so you can understand uh, sort of how we approach things uh, and why the companies demoing today are demoing. Um, so back in 2008, I was a, so most people think we started like recently, but we didn't. <laughs> we started in November 2008 um, and Neil, Raj and I decided to start a magazine um, and we thought it would be like a New Yorker meet Vanity Fair for Canadian university students. Uh, we put out our first issue in September uh, across six campuses, uh, or no, across one campus, and it was Queens. Uh, and it was awesome, and it was great. And we were highlighting student work, people were getting exposure, um, and we did it in September 09, sidewalk sale. And, uh, and then people were like, can we be in the next issue? Uh, and we said, uh, next issue? We were just doing this sort of, sort of once. Uh, so we put out another issue in uh, January 2010. Uh, but then by that time, people from like Waterloo and Guelph started submitting, so we're like, oh, maybe we should do another one in like September 2010 and have it across six campuses. So we expanded. Um, and then we're like, man, this is like relatively simple. Let's go coast to coast. Uh, and that's when it all like fell apart. So we had lots of content. <laughs> well, we were young, you know, we thought it was simple. Uh, we, were, we were very wrong, but I'm certainly glad we tried that because by that time, we got an office in Toronto. Uh, so we were distributing in Ottawa, Kingston, Waterloo, and London. And we thought, you know, eventually we're gonna wanna be based in Toronto, we need to sell national ads, the agencies are all in Toronto, let's get an office in Toronto. And so we found this spot at King and Bathurst, uh, where Project Rhino is now, it's not a coincidence. Um, and uh, there's this 1,300 square foot room and uh, we could not afford it alone. Um, we originally we wanted a 300 square foot room and then the landlord gave that to someone else and then he showed us this 1300 square foot room and we're like, is it the same price? And he said, no. <laughs> and we're like, well, how can we afford it? He's like, that's not my problem. And so some friends of ours were starting their own company uh, for whatever reason, it was a video production company. And, uh, and uh, you know, they were like, you know what, we, we don't want to go on the lease, but if you guys take the lease, we'll get a couple desks from you. Uh, and we're like, great, this will allow us to, you know, continue to work on the magazine. The magazine then shifted online. Uh, Neil and I had serving jobs. Raj went out to do like a master's degree in Vancouver. Um, and we just kept working away. And the video production company grew. Uh, the magazine sort of struggled. And then there, were, there was this company called Orchestra Marketing. Uh, and Jocelyn Butler, you know, wanted to start a marketing and PR company. She came in. Long story short, over the course of a year, we then expanded to like 26 people in this 1,200 square foot room. Uh, and we're like, yes, let's get the room next door. So by June 2012, we expanded to 2,900 square feet. Um, and then everybody started leaving because uh, we don't lock anyone into any long-term commitments. And we went through this like dark period where it like literally dropped down to like seven, six, five. I think it was actually back down to like Neil, myself, Evan, and PJ. And it was very, very sad. We were bleeding money. And that's like when we learned like, man, business, like, Businesses cost money, and we were working on this online thing, and we're like, oh, we don't have to worry about expenses for online stuff, but like, even though you have an online business, you have like real-world expenses, usually like salaries, office, I don't know, infrastructure. Um, and it, it got so, so bad um, that Neil actually stopped coming to the office. It like just lost this energy. And so he went to Second Cup across the street, um, and there were, and he was working, having a coffee, and he's like, oh, I like the vibe of coffee shop. And there were these like two people working in the corner uh, these guys named Mitch and Casey, and they were hawking this product called the Fast Rack. Uh, and like, they had their two, two computers out, filing files everywhere. And Neil was about to leave, and he's like, oh, I'm going back to an empty office. These guys like, clearly have, like, they could use an office. Maybe I should invite them back. And I don't know if you've ever, ever, ever like, asked any random person to come back with you to an office. <laughs> um, 
it's not <laughs> Jay. <laughs> It's, it's not the easiest thing, but, but we have beer on tap, uh, and it was a pretty easy sell. Uh, so they came back, and, uh, and, and Neil signed up. Uh, that, this is now March 2013. Uh, what began like, a, just an incredible like, run of growth. Um, so uh, we're very happy that the Fast Rack came in, because then shortly after that, we had you know, Cyprian, we had Max and Phil. I remember going down to a like, TechCrunch Disrupt in New York, and while I was there, I was just getting all these emails, being like, email money transfer, email money transfer. I'm like, Neil, what happened? He's like, I'm tired of having an empty office. I'm doing whatever it takes uh, to cover the rent, to get people in here. No one wants to join an empty co-working space. People want to work in a co-working space that is busy. I'm like, all right, keep doing it. And then we brought on some summer interns, Amit and Nicole. And what we learned uh, from watching Amit and Nicole work is that when somebody focus on, focuses on something full time and they're not like distracted by anything, uh, they can do pretty amazing things. So that summer, Amit and Nicole took the space from like eight members and grew it to like 48 members. And that was like absolutely incredible. And then they left. Uh, but before they left, they had grown the business so much that we were able to like expand into the room next door. Um, and uh, the room next door became what's known as the Rhino Lounge. Uh, so now we had 5,200 square feet, we had about 50 members, and uh, we were going on a year-by-year -year lease, and we were you know, afraid that the building might sell, and now all these people will not have a home for their business. So we decided to stop expanding within King and Bath Bathurst, stop expanding Project Rhino, and we started looking for a new spot. Um, and it took us a long, long time, because commercial real estate is actually really difficult. Uh, it's hard to find uh, spaces that are appropriate. Uh, it's hard to find, and, and you want to sign like a long-term lease. And eventually, in January of this year, we found this spot. And in February 15th of this year, uh, we moved in. And by March 1st, people started working here. And today, it's pretty much full. Um, and that is kind of how we do business. Uh, we've decided that if you want to do something, you just got to make sure your revenues are higher than your expenses. Uh, you got to make sure you ha have the right team of people. Um, and that's what we've been assembling uh, over the past three years while we've been you know, running these co-working spaces, at first by accident, now intentionally. And that brings me to why we're all here today. Um, so over the course of the past year, we've been having people join, and they've been working on their own projects. Some are self-funded, some have money from friends and family, but all of them are determined to make it happen. And we felt that they'd gotten to a point where they actually need to now show what's going on. They need to celebrate. We all need to celebrate the determination uh, of these fine young people. 